Okay, YouTubers, this is The Angry Prepper. Today's video is going to be a short video, but we're going to talk about nothing to see here. And what I mean by that, the Bilderberg meeting in D.C. June 2nd through the 5th this past week. Not much was said about it. No one really spoke about it. Maybe YouTube channels are talking about it, but no one else. Mainstream media didn't even mention this. Anyway, the Bilderberg group, if you will, or rather was a family turned into a group, has been around since the 50s, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even the uh, late 40s. So they've been around for a while. They have, guys, it's seemingly been calling the shots for a very long time. They're sort of right up there with the uh, World Economic Forum, except for they like the Amer they're like the, I guess, American version, if you will. And they've been calling the shots with all the rich uh, families here in the United States. With that, guys, this meeting had a couple of pointers on it that were, uh, were interesting because a lot of the pointers that, or rather the focus, atop, the, the focus topics that they had going on were pretty interesting. And let me read them to you now. Geopolitical realignment, NATO challenges, China, Indo-Pacific realignment, Sino-US tech competitions, Russia, continuity of government and the economy, that's going to be an important one. The disruption of global financial systems, that's another important one. Disinformation, energy security and sustainability, that's an important one. Post-pandemic health, fragmentation of democratic societies, that's very important. And trade, deglobalization, and the Ukraine. So guys, again, they want to talk about China, Russia, and Ukraine. Now, leave Ukraine out of this. They're like a, a, a non-threat. They're just a fucking headache right now that's causing a lot of woes. Anyway, Russia and China, those are the two big cancers that need to be dealt with. Now, how's the Builder Brand, going to t Builder Brand uh, group going to talk about them? I don't know. I don't know to what capacity. I don't know if they're going to side with China. Or I don't know if they're going to fund Russia. Who the fuck knows? But nonetheless, they're talking about them. But the continuity of government, that's the one that sticks out. That's the one that should stick out to everyone's head. Because the continuity of government, guys, and... The only reason why I learned about the continuity of government was when I started getting into prepping and I started researching ELEs, right? Extinction level events. An extinction level event is where everything on this planet is pretty much wiped out. But if you're in a hidey hole or some underground cave or whatever, the continuity of government is just, it's said to still be alive, right? They are the people that are hiding away with X amount of people. The continuity of government for every country is important because without that, you can have a new superpower in your country before you blink your eyes. Now, continuity of government here in the United States, guys, uh, obviously the president, the vice president, and if I'm not mistaken, the Speaker of the House and a lot of other politicians, they go in their separate corners. None of them are hidden in one spot. So if the president dies, the vice president takes over, the vice president takes over, I think the Speaker of the House takes over. With that, guys, they're talking about the continuity of government. But for who? For the United States? For Russia? For China? Who? Is it the world? I think they're talking about us. I think, guys, that all of these things that are happening are pointing to us having something very bad happen to us. Hence, my Deagle report, when I talked about 100 million Americans will have disappeared, died off, if you will. Now they're talking about continuity of government. That is a more interesting one because that means something cataclysmic is going to happen to this country, and they're going to try to figure out a way how to keep the government running. The disruption of global financial systems. Clearly, guys, if we get attacked, if something bad happens to this country, we're pretty much the center of that financial system. Something happens to us, the market takes a shit everywhere else in the world. I think China and Russia are willing to make that sacrifice. I think India is siding with China, which I'm a little surprised about, and Iran is siding with China as well. So those countries are taking care of themselves. And I think, guys, in the next coming weeks, not months, but weeks, we're gonna see a lot of other countries join the Russia-China pact. These countries are going to start getting phone calls from China and Russia, and, they're going to, and China and Russia are going to start using scare tactics to get these countries to join them so that they are at least financially squared away if the shoe drops, the hammer drops, sorry. UK, unfortunately, they're going to take the fucking hit as well. Japan will take the hit, Australia, New Zealand, so on and so forth. 
If people don't side with China, they're going to be on their own. Now, if you trust China, if you're a country that trusts them, you're a fucking asshole. Because if you're a small country, you're dead in the waters. They just want that numbers to look good. But I think if you're a smaller country, you're not going to get the help you think you're going to get if they attack the United States. If they attack the United States, guys, the entire world plummets into a Great Depression, worse than a Great Depression. Now, guys, energy and sustainability, obviously, that's the, been the fucking talk for the last, I don't know how long now, 10 years, 15 years. And every country's talking about it. Uh, obviously, they're probably talking about it because of the whole oil problem and the whole gas problem and the diesel fuel. And now they're having problems with fucking those wind farms. So there are a lot of places that are going to suffer, again, if anything happens to us. Um, we're going to suffer badly. I know that if, if we get attacked, guys, we're, we're definitely going to fucking, we're going to hurt. Um, do I think that this attack is going to be some all scaled out uh, nuclear annihilation? No. Will we get hit with a few of them? Yes. Will a lot of Americans die? Yep. They'll die in the fallout and they'll die in the aftermath. Will we be able to pick ourselves up from that? Yes. But it will take a long while before we even see anything that resembles what we used to be. Now, fragmentation of democratic society was very interesting. I don't know if they're talking about the country's democracy as a whole or the actual Democratic Party. But nonetheless, the fact that they're talking about fragmentation of democratic society means that this here, guys, again, we're absolutely falling apart. We have, we have social Democrats now. We have Democrats who act like socialists. We have actual socialist Democrats who act like socialists. We got Republicans that are fucking burying their head in the sand and not doing anything about it. We have no other political parties fighting for the working man and the working people or free Americans. We got more of the left trying to destroy our freedoms. And interestingly enough, the Bilderberg uh, group brings this up. Well, they bring it up in the form of a point. Now, I don't know if they were really talking about the way we are, but they brought it up in the form of a point. Anyway, guys, this is just a video letting you guys know that this meeting went down. A lot of interesting shit was said. I'm speculating on the things that were said because I'm not there. I'm not rich. I'm not white. I'm not rich and white. Uh, that has nothing to do with it because there were a lot of fucking uh, black folks there who were elite. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're not rich, if you're not part of Forget about being rich. If you're not part of the elite, you're not part of this meeting, period. You can see the guest list online. I'll put it in the uh, description section below. You can see the guest list of who was invited to the party and who wasn't. It seemed like all world leaders were invited to this party, uh, except us, whatever. But anyway, guys, uh, nonetheless, all of these things happening, guys, are not a fucking coincidence anymore. Really can't be. You can't have the World Economic Forum one week and then the next week the Bilderberg Group meets. And they're both talking about the same points of government, uh, continuity of government, the Ukraine, the Russia. They're pretty much talking about the same shit, guys. People need to get their head out of their asses because this shit is getting real fast. Now, hopefully nothing happens this year. Hopefully they can push it off for another couple of years. But if the rumors of China attacking in November is right, who knows? My thing, since I made the video, them attacking in November is not likely. And it's not likely because the Chinese are now having a lot of problems with their Navy, meaning the technology and shit that they have on them. So that could be bumped, right? But I, I could be wrong, but I, hopefully I'm right about the technological, the technological issues they're having with their ships that's going to bump that invasion off. Anyway, guys, this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching.